I'm the Gangster Nerd. And with Doomsday Clock coming out here soon, the Gangster Nerd is getting excited. With the Watchmen universe crossing over into the mainstream DC universe, who wouldn't be losing their minds? The Watchmen graphic novels from the 1980s are a fantasy world mixed with the grit and gruff of the unrealistically real world. One of the most noteworthy things about the story is that the superhero characters, none of them have superpowers. And that's a bit odd considering that Watchmen gave us one of, if not the most OP character of all time in Dr. Manhattan. But you may be aware of that already. What you not, might not be aware of is where does the inspiration for such a character come from? Is he someone we could have known all along? Perhaps an Egyptian god? I'm Walt the Most Gangster Nerd on YouTube, and this is a theory. So, jumping in the time machine and going way back to the days of 1986, the Watchmen series introduces us to Dr. Manhattan, an all blue, all powerful, all natural super being who loves the ladies. But he wasn't always big blue and awesome. No, our Dr. Manhattan was born Jonathan Osterman, a scientist. He was involved in intrinsic fields experiments, attempting to figure out if there was another force holding things together besides gravity. Our Johnny Boy meets one Janie Sledder. They hit it off and while on a date, Janie's watch is broken. Fortunately, Jonathan, the son of a watch repairman, knows how to fix it. He does so. However, he leaves the watch in his lab coat and leaves his lab coat in a test chamber. A test chamber that's designed to separate the intrinsic field from objects. John goes in to retrieve the watch, however the door to the test chamber closes behind him with poor John stuck inside, and he is ripped apart at a molecular level. But he's not dead. First a circulatory system is seen in a kitchen, then a musculatory system is seen. Not long after this, Dr. Manhattan appears in the kitchen in all his glory, and boom, he's a god. He remarks, it was a matter of reassembling the components in the correct sequence. A mere mortal man before, now after being completely dismembered on an atomic scale, he was able to put himself back together and in the process was empowered and enlightened to the level of a god. Now keep in mind, this story was wrote back in 1986. And that's old school by some standards, but that ain't the half of it. What if this story is even older? Going back in time, further, uh, further, there we go, Ancient Egypt. One of the oldest and best known ancient Egyptian myths is that of Osiris, god of the underworld. Osiris, like Dr. Manhattan, was born a mortal human man, however, he would become king and marry Isis. As time progressed, he grew in popularity and that was all great and well. Unfortunately for him, his brother Set grew very jealous. He wanted Isis as his wife and he wanted to rule Egypt. Things were only made worse when Osiris made Isis the regent of Egypt instead of his brother, and this would be the final straw for Set who concocted an elaborate but effective death for his brother. He constructed a special chest and offered it to anyone who could fit in it. Only he made the chest to fit Osiris himself. As Osiris attempted to lay in it, Set slammed the door, sealed it, and threw it in the Nile River. After the chest rose to the surface, Set then dismembered his brother and scattered his body parts. Well, alright then, anger issues. Later, Isis would find all his dismembered parts, reassemble them, and much like Dr. Manhattan, Osiris was reborn as a god. It's almost uncanny how similar the two actually are. Both born totally normal, with Jonathan Osterman being the son of a watch repairman who went on to become a Princeton educated scientist, and Osiris who was born the first son of Gavin Newt who would go on to become king. Both had love interests in Janie Slater and Isis, however the similarities take a different turn after this point. Both characters meet their supposed doom suddenly with little warning. Neither John Ostermus nor Osiris seemed to be aware of the danger that they were both in. John Osterman walked right into that intrinsic field separation chamber with only seconds before the door would close. As well, Osiris clearly had no idea Set was out to get him as he laid down in the special chest on his own before Set sealed him in. Along with that, both Osterman and Osiris found their way into their predicaments as a direct result of their love interests. The ancient Egyptian story tells us how jealous Set was of his brother's wife wanting her as his own. 
This would lead Set to murdering Osiris, dismembering him, etc. And at the same time, without involving murder, Osterman would meet his fate going to retrieve his girlfriend's watch he repaired from the test chamber. Without enough time to get out of the chamber. Oddly enough though, it is this that would prove to be their most important moment. John Osterman being completely disintegrated, and Osiris, who had been completely taken apart by Set and scattered, both would manage to make it back, though through different means. In the Watchman story, Dr. Manhattan stated that he was able to put himself back together, and in the ancient Egyptian stories, it was Isis who was able to gather up all of Osiris's dismembered parts and reassemble him. And it is at this point both characters shed their simple mortal realities and become gods. In the Egyptian tradition, as soon as Osiris was put back together, he was returned to his body, but was now a god, capable of all things gods can do. He is so powerful, Anubis, who was the god of the underworld until that point, actually stepped out the way for Osiris to take over. Along with his awesome power-ups, his appearance was changed as well. He no longer resembled other human men, and he was now depicted after his return usually with green or blue skin to symbolize he had not come back to life, but was now immortal. Likewise, in Watchmen number 4, Dr. Manhattan seems to go through the exact same process. Now granted he seems to need a few tries, but once he does get himself back together, and in the correct sequence, he was returned to his body and was now a god. And much like Osiris, Dr. Manhattan is immediately hailed as the super being, not by another god like Anubis, but by equally important President JFK. And like Osiris, his appearance was altered, having a new blue skin showing that he was no longer the same as normal people, he was now immortal. But what really stood out to the gangster nerd was a smaller similarity. Something I think a lot of people have overlooked, both Dr. Manhattan and Osiris are best identified through a single symbol, though not the same one. Something everybody may know about unknowingly is the Eye of Osiris, also known as the Eye of Horus, an ancient symbol used both in antiquity and currently to symbolize power and omnipotence. And it's this single symbol that most people commonly identify with Osiris. To add to that, Dr. Manhattan in Watchman number 4 states, If I am to have a symbol, it will be one I respect. And what commands the respect of a blue super god? Hydrogen. The most abundant element in the universe, and the lightest yet with the highest energy content. Which could easily symbolize both omnipotence and power. And would be right at home if it were used to symbolize Osiris. So, to be conclusive, Dr. Manhattan and Osiris certainly have a lot in common. Both started off normal enough, both were killed in extreme circumstances, completely destroyed, yet came back and ascended from mere mortal men to gods. Super powerful gods. You can say they seem similar given there's only like 5,000 years between the two, but to say they are the same character, well, you wouldn't be completely incorrect. But hey, that's just a theory. Gangsta Nerd on YouTube, and I'll see you soon.